front pages of the Daily Express this morning. It calls last night's vote one of the most remarkable turnarounds in political history. Well, speaking in the House of Commons after the vote, Theresa May said it proved the desire for changes to the Irish backstop at the safety net to avoid a hard border. There is limited appetite for such a change in the EU and negotiating it will not be easy. But in contrast to a fortnight ago, this House has made it clear what it needs to approve a withdrawal agreement. So limited appetite, but the government won all but one of the other votes that took place last night. The attempts to push back the date of Brexit also failing. The only vote the government lost was when MPs supported a move to rule out no deal, but it's not legally binding, so the government could choose to ignore it. I'll, uh, I'll read you a couple of the other headlines from the papers this morning. The Times says May unites Tories behind fresh talks with Brussels, and the, uh, the Daily Mail uh, calls it Theresa's triumph this morning. Well, with me is Professor Charlotte O'Brien, who teaches EU law at York at Law University. Morning, Charlotte. Good morning. So what's your reaction to what happened last night? You were nodding your head when I said it was a long night in the <laughs> House was, of Commons. Yes, <laughs> it was. Um, well, it's interesting. The, the House of Commons seems very adept right now at rejecting things, and that was the mood. Um, so we found out a couple of weeks ago they did not like the deal as it was. We found out last night that they don't want no Brexit, but they also don't want the backstop that's part of the current deal. And they also didn't want to vote for any of the mechanisms mechanisms that might actually enable them to stand in the way of no Brexit. So voting against the extensions, voting against the extra debates that uh, Dominic Grieva proposed. So it's it still feels like we don't have that clear a handle on what they do want. The Brady Amendment uh, suggesting that alternative arrangements are put in place instead of the backstop is to put it mildly, quite vague. What what alternative arrangements are possible? That's the question. Right. Well, stay with me, Charlotte. Let's get some more reaction to last night. And I'm talking to Professor Charlotte O'Brien, who teaches EU law at York Law University. And I can see, I'm looking at the amendments here, Corbyn amendments, voted down 296 to 327. Um, mm-hmm. That was the uh, the alternative to the Brexit deal. Um, she, uh, I mean, it was kind of a resounding win in a lot of ways. And the, the, only, the only sticking point, or not sticking sticking point was the Brady Amendment to the backstop Um, and people saying you know 317 yes 301 no so that was the only one that sort of came out on top really wasn't it? Uh, Yes and it's interesting that um, that actually had Theresa May's backing that she encouraged her MPs to vote for an amendment that would alter the deal that she had negotiated uh, which uh, which is an extraordinary turn of events really. Um, it also puts her in a, in, in a peculiar position uh, a slightly standard order of play when it comes to EU negotiations really Does it put her that, in a stronger position because actually she has got the backing now? Well she's got she now actually finally has a mandate she can go to the EU um, after having been sent away with a flea in her ear for not having garnered support for the deal she'd spent some time negotiating. However, uh, the EU has already made clear that the deal is not open for renegotiation, that the backstop is non-negotiable, we really need to avoid a hard border in Ireland and so on. So there's this danger of, uh, it's the same when it happened when Cameron went to renegotiate the uh, the UK-EU deal and then what's happened since, is that there's inflated expectations at home Um, There is a certain amount of reluctance on the part of the EU that even if there is some kind of compromise reached, the chances are it will be derided when she comes back home as being a fudge. But also they're saying no compromise. The EU is saying no concessions, no renegotiation. Mm. So there's a little bit of hope today, but actually... By the end of the week, we may our hopes may be dashed again, Charlotte. Yeah, quite possibly. And it has been suggested that in spite of the uh, the vote uh, in which there was a majority in favour of rejecting no deal, that actually this series of decisions makes no deal more likely, that we're sending our negotiators off on some kind of a wild goose chase that's slightly doomed. And it's interesting that the government has been ploughing so many resources into no deal planning at the last minute. There's lots of bits of legislation flying off the shelves at the moment and it will all happen in quite a rush if that if that's the case and the, you know at the risk of sounding like a lawyer you legislate in haste you repent at leisure oh my word legislate in haste repent <laughs> at leisure always a start warning i do see though now and the the, the papers are calling it a humiliation for jeremy corbyn mm. because he now has agreed it's he's been forced 
to immediately have conversations with Theresa May. Yes. I mean, he couched that in terms of now it's been accepted that no deal should be taken off the table. So, uh, you know, it saves a certain amount of face in that respect. But the fact remains that it's still only, you know, a political declaration and that we we can't see the clear steps in place to have no deal off the table. There is no clear plan. But I think it's probably, uh, you know, I think it will be welcomed as a as a good development, given that there was a great deal of backlash against his refusal to enter into talks with Theresa May in the first place. Charlotte, thank you so much for casting your eye over this this morning. I really appreciate you coming in so early. Oh, it's a pleasure. Have you got a full day ahead? Uh, a cold full day, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try and keep warm. Uh, you, Professor you Charlotte O'Brien uh, teaches EU law at York Law University. You're listening to Georgie at uh, breakfast. I was going to say Georgie at Brexit then. It's, <laughs> it's inevitable, isn't it? Uh, you're listening to Georgie at breakfast. It's just gone at quarter past seven.